and see if this monitor works for it. All right, let's see. I click on Deltas first. Let's see if Delta accepts. Yo, yo. Okay. Hey, hey, hey I'm works? sorry. Yeah, it works. Uh, sorry, my mic probably is bad. I'm outside. Oh, geez. Can I invite two people to speak? Let's see. Simi. Just wanted to test them out. Okay, sir. Yeah. Yo. Yeah. Yo, yeah, there okay, we go. So All right. So multiple All people right. can okay. come up on. All right, good. That's good. On the stage? Okay, cool. So I can back out? Yeah, and you back out. Yeah, there you go. That's good to test it out. All right, we got a couple more minutes left. And let me see if I can do this. Yeah, they had this for, what, a year now on Discord? Crap told me that, but I knew from the other servers that they had this face thing. It's just one dude that does the speech and stuff on that server. Um, similar to Twitter. Like I said, Twitter Spaces is literally what it is. Twitter Spaces for Discord. <clears throat> Yep. Technology virtual ad. All right, just one more minute. Like I said, I'll probably just do like a little quick introduction and um, we'll just skip to the Q&As, to be honest with you. <laughs> I don't want to like drag this out. <laughs> just want to keep this as smooth and quick as possible. Pause. All right, it's eight o'clock. Let's do. It. All right, <clears throat> I just I don't know when retro is gonna come in, but I guess this uh, this is always late. <laughs> Wait, let me DM him real quick. Just one last DM. Cause he definitely wants to jump in. And uh, ask. Gotta wait on him. Do you feel public helps you build your portfolio better than Robinhood did? Um, yeah, it's just a quick question. I, I I'll answer it. So Delta, yeah, uh, it not real. It's the same thing as any other brokerage, but uh, public has a better customer service support than uh, Robinhood because they literally got back to me quick with the questions I had for them regarding the site UI and like site services like J Trading, for example. And uh, yeah, way better than Robin Hood. All right, this guy's not gonna do it on time. God damn it, Retro. One, two, three. That's a Delta, any other quick questions before we start? Yeah, screw this. Uh, yeah, I'm about to just start. <clears throat> All right, so you already know who I am. Y'all, it's the Yemster. But anyway, we're yeah, you know, I've been trading since like 21, January 2021, to be honest with you. That's my first time like ever getting into trading, and uh, it was during the uh, meme craze of GameStop, AMC, BlackBerry. Uh, etc. And uh, you know, at first I was a you know noob trader, and I did not know a lick of like buying and selling, like when to buy, when to sell. And um, you know, as the 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 whole year of 2021 go went by, uh, I got you know acclimated into like looking up all like research regarding what stocks are good, what's a penny stock, what's a long term stock. 
uh, meme stocks, high volatility stocks, basically. And, um, you know, uh, then I got into trading options in March of 2021. And that's when I started becoming a <laughs> more high ex volatile trader, degen trader per se. And, uh, been trading a lot of uh like AMC and GME during that time and then June hit of that year and I'm you know my portfolio went from like two thousand to sixteen thousand then by June second the highest it was on my Robinhood account at the time was eighty and then yeah you guess what happened next lost it all um yeah it's it was that bad it's a learning experience, and uh, you know, since then, you know, I've been trying to like research how options work in the trading aspects of stocks. That's how I made most of my money, and that's how you, you know, you guys want to know about like what's the best way to make money in stocks trading. Period. Uh, you got you got to balance both buying shares and trading options like calls and puts, but um, you know. I'll, I'll just keep it simple with you. You just got to, you know, re do your research. Know, like, manage your bankroll. Be careful what you invest in. Uh, you know, research the trends on, like, social media and stuff. Like, the news regarding the companies that you like or want to, like, take a peek at interest in. Um, you know, like, for short squeeze plays, if people are into that type of thing, that's what started for me. Uh, for me to get in. Like AMC and GameStop, high short interest stocks, pretty much like stocks are being, you know, hammered down by the shorts, aka people who bet the stock will, you know, go down and they make money for the stock to go down. And if the stock goes up with enough buying pressure from like retail investors, which is us, uh, the stock could initiate a short squeeze. And, um, High or short interest stocks are like, you know, this past week with uh, Faraday Trading, for example, it was a 94% short interest, which means literally almost all the shares of the float for that stock has been shorted, which means that, yeah, it's really beaten down because it used to be, that stock Faraday Trading used to be around $100 plus and it was beaten down all the way to four cents. Yeah, <laughs> four cents. And uh, this past week, it went from four cents to three dollars and eighty-six cents yesterday at the high, and then it was beaten down to a dollar and thirteen cents at the close. But people who bought in early made a like two thousand x profits, pretty much. And uh, that's what I'm trying to say. You know when to buy and when to sell. Usually. Basic trading is you buy at the lowest as much as possible, and whenever you feel comfortable, take it, take your profits out as you make, you know, it's high where, you know, the stock goes up, just, you know, sell whenever you feel comfortable with. It's up to you. Uh, not, not financial advice. You know, I'm not telling you sell here or sell there, but, uh, like, you know, whenever you feel comfortable with. Yeah. Yeah, retro. Yeah. <laughs> It's all about timing. Yeah, some people, you know, have a, a certain limit to where, you know, okay, I feel comfortable with this. I'll take it out. I'm good with 150 bucks profits or a $1,000. Um, but in, like, your brokerage account, like Robinhood, uh, Webull, Public, what I'm using, you can set a feature on it called Stop Loss. So when you enable that, the uh, computer automatically triggers a price target that you would like. To automatically sell your stock or option, same thing. It works both ways. At a certain price target, which the stock hits, whether it's going up or down. So if I set a stop loss at two dollars and fifty cents for Faraday trading when it was at three eighty six, once it hits two fifty, and if it doesn't halt, it will trigger the stop loss sell, which then you get the profits of what you you know you get. Um, are those premium features by Simi? Uh, no, it, everybody has this, um, feature. Every retail trader has it on their uh, brokerage account app. So, uh, 
yeah, you should be good when you use those features. But like I said, for me personally, I do it manually because I just feel like it's easier to um, see like in real time trading, like the stock price action going up and down and uh, selling on my own terms versus then a computer system trying to like trigger it so sometimes. I don't know. I, I I just like to do it manually. Um, so yeah, that's, that's basically the, uh, the basics of selling it, buying and selling at the high and lows. Uh, but I just go straight to the Q and A's if that's okay with you guys. Like, You know when the dip actually dips. Oh yeah, so <clears throat> Simi. So for the dips, you basically gotta study the charts. So let me uh see if I can share my screen here. Uh you guys see the uh share screen by any chance? So it works? Alright. So let me uh, show you my portfolio here. This is, yeah, this is this week's. I Like I said, I already cashed out a bunch of the uh, the profits I got from AMC and GME. So this is just the current portfolio um, what I had. So my history was, this is what I have right now currently is these three. It's degen trading pretty much right now. I have a 500 buys of AMC for this upcoming week. AMV I have till July 19th. For the call option and Tupperware, I'm buying for this week. But um, the charts, let me show you the charts. Portfolio. It's for example, let's see. So this is the stock I was talking about earlier with Faraday Trading, where it went from this to the high of Friday was 387 to now. 113. You guys see that, right? With Faraday trading? So, uh, okay, good. All right, so for dips, you really, it, it's tough to know when that stock actually dips because it's, right now, the you know, the market's closed and all, but when the market's, you know, active during trading hours, you can actually see the volume of, like, people buying and selling on a chart and, um, and to study a chart when to and actually would dip is to study its RSI. And what I mean by RSI is the amount of people buying, the high volatility of buying and selling on a stock. So if the RSI, for example, is it would be down here where my mouse is, it will show you like up and down, up and down, up and down. We enable the graph, uh, like a Robin Hood or something like that. <clears throat> if the RSI is going up like this, it's bound to cool down, which means this would start to come down because of how much less you know buying it would be uh, on the stock and then the price would go down a bit because of due to sellers and whatnot so rsi usually is a number from zero to like a hundred pretty much a hundred rsi is like the max and um like i said the lower the rsi the lower the volume buying of a stock is the higher the more people are buying it and uh like right here uh, yesterday on Friday. Let's see, it was a good short, right? Like right at tw basically by 12 p.m. from 9 to 12 p.m. It was a lot of like excessive buyers for this stock, and then people start selling and selling and selling, and taking profits, and then everything starts to cool down. And look towards the end of the day, it just yeah, it literally cooled the hell down. <laughs> pretty much and then there's some buyers after hours till 8 p.m in which the uh, post market closes so the market pretty much opens at eight o'clock a.m for pre-market trading and uh the market closes at 8 p.m for post-market trading but the main hours is from 9 30 a.m eastern time to 4 p.m eastern time that's all live trading see it says pre-market and then it's all live until 4 p.m. and it says after hours from 4 to 8. So yeah, 
that's just the basics of like uh you know starting charts and like when to expect a dip and whatnot um i also lay about some charts here you know basic stuff to research you know decide what type of trader you want to be aggressive passive you know, research your brokerages, like which one's suitable for your needs, like a Robin Hood. Like me, no, I I am good with Robin Hood. I'm on public. I, I I'm happy for stocks trading on publictrading.com. Uh, you know, you gotta research the stocks you want to own. Uh, place your order with your brokerage to buy or sell your stocks, and learn about risk management. Like I said, uh, when to sell, when to buy. You just gotta be careful. You never want to buy at the top, so. When you see a chart like, uh, let me see, like this, this is a weekly chart of this. You do not want to buy when it's like <laughs> on a Thursday and then you just see this. But, you know, some people do that and they don't know when the dip's going to come because until you see the RSI is like at a max level. And that's when people start selling, when the RSI is at a max level. But for me, I, I was thinking about buying this right here on Tuesday. I didn't pull the trigger, sadly. If I did, <laughs> shit, that would have been a way, way better week this past week. But I had a really good week, to be honest, because let me see. This is my portfolio. Uh, I don't think it accounts for the money I, you know, made and, you know, put back in the bank. So that's not accurate right now. It would have been, yeah, it was six figures at the high, like 211000 was at the highest. So this takes to account after I put everything back in the bank. So this is, yeah, this is not completely accurate for my portfolio. I have this in my buying power right now. Um, yeah, I like public because it tells you, you know, label by actual categories like options, bonds, crypto. That's another story for another day. <laughs> but uh, yeah, this is my three options I'm playing right now for the time being but i might change it up a bit i'm keeping amd for sure this is the stock i'm longing amd for uh till july 19th so yeah for uh options when you buy a call is that what you guys want to know about like buying calls and puts next all right <clears throat> so in options trading uh it's basically like Sports betting, but smart sports betting for stocks. Um, so you basically, when you buy a call or a put, you're buying a hundred for like for one contract is a hundred shares, borrowing of a certain stock, and you're betting that stock to hit a certain price target by that expiration date. So for example, when I bought AMD, I am betting a two hundred fifty dollar strike price for the you know the stock price. Which is right now, it's currently at 164. Let me double check AMD. Yes, $164.39. So I bought a $250 strike price, 500 contracts of it. So uh, it's 500 times 100. And that's pretty much 50,000 shares I have of AMD borrowed to hit by July 19th, 2024. And uh, I bought it at. Was it 20? Oh, right here. Basically at 0.30. So for that, which means one of contract equals $30. So yeah, 500 of that equals, yeah, it was like around 12,000. 15,000, oh, 14,000, my bad. It was around there. But uh, yeah, it's, then you got to worried. But if the stock doesn't price, we lose a shit ton now. Yeah, if the stock doesn't hit that price by the date expiration, you lose all of it, pretty much. It doesn't get exercised by the uh, brokerage. And what I mean by exercise is um, you can only exercise your calls or puts if it's already in the money, which means it passes the price target that you want it. So like mine would be 250, 251, 252, 253 uh, sh uh, share dollars per price per share i mean sorry per share of amd i could exercise the calls like all 500 of them if i wanted to and uh you also need capital for it which is yeah it costs more money to do that so i just you know like any other trader would 
usually they just sell the calls or you sell your puts and just take your profits. Like that's what most people do because they don't really want to buy shares of the you know the stock that's already going up from your you know point of buying for your call options or put options. Um, yeah, so I usually just sell them. But uh, underline, yeah, yeah, already, already's got it down there. Yeah, retro. Uh, yeah, if it hits a target, you sell the call to make profit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you could sell before the date of expiration, and uh, what I mean is, if the stock keeps going up, up, up from now before expiration, the um, IV or implied volatility of the stock. So that means right here, this would gradually go up like crazy, and that's pretty much your value of this thing will go up. And uh, if I have 500 and this hits like 0.80, for example, and it's not even you know July 19th yet, I would make like X amount of profits, and I would sell that if I wanted to for a lot of money. So I don't have to wait till you know date of expiration. If uh you know, yeah, you could just sell. Is there a minimum amount of money you need to put into an option? Uh, it depends on the uh the cost basis of the you know the call the option. So um, yeah, you can only you can buy one, you can buy two, as many as you want. So there's no like limit to buying like how many contracts of a put or call. Um. Just got a, you know, the value of this, for example, was $30 for one call option of this when you when I bought it. But I bought 500 of them, so, yeah. So there's no minimum amount of money you need to put in for a call option or put. Yeah. It's, like I said, it's literally the sports betting of stocks. Yeah. For puts, you want it to go down to make money. For calls, you want it to go up the price to make money. Excuse me. So, yeah, that's pretty much what it comes down to. Oh, sorry. But yeah, uh, puts sounds like a hater betting. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah, if you hate that freaking company, like, oh, god damn, I hate Starbucks. Fuck all them bitches at Starbucks. I'm going to buy puts on this shit-ass company. Yeah, then you you would hope it goes bankrupt at that point. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Nah, but yeah, yeah. So this here, uh, I, like, I have faith in AMD. I think because next week, the reason why I bought AMD calls, uh, NVIDIA. Everybody knows NVIDIA. They have their earnings this upcoming Wednesday. So uh, I'm expecting really big things from NVIDIA. So if NVIDIA like blows its earnings out the water, uh, AMD should follow suit and go up with it because they're both AI chip companies now um, and whatnot. But uh, yeah, that's, that's why. That's my main reason why. I, I just have faith. And also uh, one of the dudes... The quote unquote experts on what you call it CNBC, they, they were like saying, Oh, uh, Nvidia is being replaced by AMD. So, and now Microsoft is actually investing in AMD for the chips, the AI chips for the computer systems. Uh, this past Friday, uh, they're uh, you know, Microsoft's really putting a lot of money into uh, AMD, which so is why that's you know, it benefits the company. Yeah, facts retro. Yeah, I mean, you, you don't even want to know, bro. Like, every day I wake up, I've been waking up, like, 6 o'clock in the morning every morning on a weekday. I'm just so used to it. My body's just used to getting up early now. Yeah. <laughs> Hit the gym, come back, and open up my apps, open up the YouTube streams, and uh, watch the stocks, bro. That's what, that's what I've been doing this these past few months. <laughs> I'm just tapped in. I'm locked in. Uh, so if you guys know who I want to follow, I usually follow these guys on YouTube, LiveTraderTV.tv. These guys are really good. They explain everything, like, they dumb it down so much. 
in a lot of aspects of stocks. They cover the latest news. They have their streams all day, every day on the weekdays. And um, yeah, I've been watching these guys for like five months now. And they're, they're really uh, like, inf they have a lot of information, really good information. So I have a playlist. I already posted it in the uh, Wall Street Boys Discord channel. Uh, Neil's lesson of the day here. These ones I have posted up there for you guys to, you know, watch at your own pace. He, like, covers every single, like, tips and tricks to trading, uh, <clears throat> studying charts. Like, I don't want to get into that because that's just too much. That's literally too much to study charts and stuff. Uh, like, Fibonacci levels, the three white soldiers. Yes, this actually the thing called the three white soldiers on a chart. Uh, a lot of different terminologies for stocks. Like, there's a lot. <laughs> there's a whole new, like, world. Black Swan event. That's pretty much, yeah, 2020, COVID, remember? Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it's so much. And Oddity has it, too. Joseph Carlin, uh, Carlson's also good. <clears throat> but, uh, yeah, I think that we got everything covered for, like, the basics, options, buying stocks and shares. Um, so you guys want to, you know, ask some questions and the, uh, Request to speak, go for it. There you go. <clears throat> Anybody want to request to speak? All right. Oh shit. All right, Sammy. Go for it. All right. So real quick, do you have any opinions on like dividend stocks? Do I have any opinions on dividend stocks? Uh, dividends are really good in a way that it really would pump the price of the stock up because people are like putting more and more money into that a company they love. Uh, also for long term investments, dividends are great because you get a percentage of interest back um per share that you own of that stock like um you talk about like like dividends for like stock splits and whatnot too right because dividends for like a stock split would really benefit you as well um like a, for, for example nvidia did it like a, is it two to one or three to one stock split uh a year ago or so they're gonna do another one I, eventually that's what i'm banking on for this week um, as a stock shareholder, if you hold shares with NVIDIA and when they do a, another stock split, you pretty much X amount your shares a lot and uh, you get more shares of that stock at the lower price when it you know reverts back down after the stock split and uh, the dividends you get from it, it's, it really benefits you. I, I, I love it. Yeah. <laughs> Is there like a like a schedule that lets you know when a stock split would happen? Yeah, um, the company would post it up on the exchange, and the uh, all your brokerage exchange would tell you and notify you when the exact date would it happen. Will it ha when it will happen? And um, yeah, that's how we know. All right, cool. Yep, no problem. So anyone else? Anyone else? Ba -ba -ba -ba. Oh yeah. Um, before we get to the next uh, speaker, um, I just want to—I want you guys to actually jump on public because it's literally public trading app. What I'm on right now, it's literally like Twitter. So let me show you. So uh, see right here, feed. So and you can follow each other. We can follow each other. We could talk to each other. Um, and whatnot. This is my account right here. It's literally like Twitter. I'm following seven things right now. Delta's my only follower. <laughs> but yeah, this is, yeah. It's literally Twitter for stocks. Publictrading.com. Uh, it's a great app to interface. UI is great. And uh, yeah, like I said, we just follow each other on here and just, you know, talk stocks. Not an ad, by the way. Public app, uh, retro, public. It's, let me see, I'll show you. We go. Uh, I can share the link. 
You can invite people on here. Ba -ba -ba. I know on my phone I could, you know, invite people on it. It's easier, but on here it's, yeah. It's whack. I can't, like, nah. Yeah, I'd rather just do it on the uh, phone. Do post my link. Yeah, it won't let me do it on here for some reason. Let's see. History profile. Nope. <clears throat> do they have a referral for going to use? Yeah, yeah, they do. CT, yeah, they do. Uh, I can send a link. I'm going to hop on my phone real quick here and just post it in the uh, chat or Wall Street Boys. It's easier. Let me do that real quick. So on the phone, this actual like link that it will copy and paste versus the uh, thing here. So let me click rewards. Okay, I think I got it right here. So you guys got to go to rewards. Rewards. It's also on mobile desk, um, the uh, <clears throat> desktop. So let me hit this. It's right here. This, the, these are the rewards for public, like the benefits of going on. You can earn up to $10,000. When you transfer your assets or cash from a different brokerage to public, um, earn free stock when you invite friends. And when your friend invites you, deposit $1,000 or more. You both earn $20 of an asset of your choice. Okay, so there we go. Post it in here because might as well. There we go. So that's the uh, referral link for mine. Yep. Anything else, guys, before we call it? Uh, anyone else want to speak? Or we're all Gucci? So we, I'm thinking about, like, covering. Uh, all right, let me see. Got your mini clip. Go for it. Yo. Yo, yo. Yeah, I just want to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I guess I just want to say, if y'all want to. Um, keep up with like what 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 the stocks are doing. You can always just look up the the name of the stock on the search engine, and it will send you like a bunch of different articles about the stock. It will show you a graph of what the stock's talk of what the stock is looking like. And alternatively, if you wanted to actually try and predict what the company's um prices might look like, you can always look at the company's financial reports and it'll it'll give you a bunch of numbers but if you know what those numbers mean like are they making a lot of money from their assets how much how many equities do they have things of that nature um there's a i don't know there's a lot that goes into it but <laughs> i just wanted to say if you want to if you want to get if you want to get into like actually looking about it you got to you got to be reading some of those news articles here and there Gotcha. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, and also <clears throat> when you like look at all the stuff like the financial aspects, like reports, earnings reports, um, from their like quarterly. So this when I say mean like quarter mm -hmm. reports is this four. It's like four quarters in a season, four quarters in a year. Mm -hmm. so like Q one, Q two, Q three, Q four to simplify it. And um, right now we're in like Q for some companies Q one. I think we're in Q two now. Yeah, yeah, because in Nvidia, mm. for example, it's doing the second earnings report this year. Um, mm -hmm. but actually I th think the first one was in February this year and, but that one was for Q4 of last year. So not to be confusing, mm -hmm. but, um, so this, this, uh, upcoming week for NVIDIA is the second report earning report of the year, but it's for their Q1 report. So it's from earlier in the winter of this year, like January, February, early March, um, like, you know, reports, but they call it Q1. Mm -hmm. So yeah, even though it's the second report of the year. <laughs> right. You can but, also yeah. look up the comp sorry, but you can also look up the company's expected earnings. So like you just type in the ticker and then expected earnings and then it mm -hmm. shows to you like what the expected earnings per share of the stock is going to be. So for example, Nvidia's is like five point five yeah, five point five. So if it if NVIDIA comes out with their earnings reports and their earnings per share actually beats 5.5, you can expect the stock to rise at least for a couple of days. 
Yep, exactly. Yeah. And, uh, you know, Wall Street, they have a certain, you know, EPS, which is earnings per share target mm -hmm. per like any company that's having their earnings report. For, like, for NVIDIA, they're very bullish about it. Here's the thing, though. Uh, when it comes to like earnings reports, if it's lower, of course, the estimate, the estimate, the stock usually tanks a little bit here and there during earnings or after earnings. Uh, but usually, Nvidia is always a strong buy, and uh, the er like the, the earnings report itself are usually higher than the estimate. And Nvidia is really good at doing that, uh, from what mm -hmm. I saw in the past. So that's why the stock keeps going up. <laughs> So, yeah. yeah, that's all my thoughts for now. Yeah, thank you, Nate. Gotcha. Yeah, no problem. So Oddity says, tell them about rolling options. So rolling options, um, pretty much is you don't have to sell by the expiration date. You can like roll it into a further out date of your same strike price. So like my AMD, for example, right here, my portfolio. I can like sell when you roll an option, you basically sell it and then push that same amount of profits into that same strike price, 250, or you can do it probably more than that if you want to. I think it depends on what brokerages you have. They give you the option to buy a different, you know, call option, but you roll it into a further out date. So from July 19th, I can roll it out to like an August 19th. Or let me see. I show you. This is the options hub for AMD. Um, where I'm at right now. July 19th. See right here where my mouse is. This is the July 19th one, and I have it right here at my long position. So if I want to roll it out, you know, it won't let me do it right now. But uh, you just click that. You just click, you know, roll. I know Robinhood has that feature. I don't know about public yet. I didn't check, but um. When you roll out, you can do in August 19th or 16th, for example, and of that same strike price if you like to, and just buy that pretty much or any other dates here further out. But yeah. So anyone else wants to speak, come up now. If not, we're ending this bad boy. Hopefully everyone had a... Uh, Pretty informative session. <laughs> yeah, I should think about doing like a little podcast or show doing this. I should have like a buddy. That's what I was thinking about. At work, there's a guy who does stocks too. But we're thinking about like calling it like a little podcast or something. But yeah. RSI was news to me, so I'm just looking at that. Yeah, RSI is a lot of like studying the charts pretty much like the buying and selling a uh, volume of a call or of a of a stock a quick recap uh so pretty much to recap proto i just saw you just entered yeah quick recap is you know the basics of buying buying and sh you know selling stocks uh options like calls and puts uh studying some charts levels like rsi the amount of buying volume of, of a stock and uh, when do you feel comfortable for taking your money out like profit wise or have a stop loss setting so you won't lose on the way down. It will trigger a computer system to sell it. And uh, we also covered uh, like earnings reports, dividends of a stock in which you hold shares for long term and you gain more shares from a dividend slash stock split of a stock um post uh the split and uh you get more shares for that stock that's for that and um rolling options i just got i just covered when you uh you know sell your call options before expiration and the feature to roll it on a website you roll it to a further out date um Let's see what else do we have here. Where do you go to do profits on your tax forms? Yeah, like I already just said, it depends on where what your broker you have brokerage so some brokerage provide you the forms the 1099 uh forms for you easily and you just print it out with all the information they have and just give it to your uh tax consultant or you know fax it to uh some tax but uh yeah 
I mean, people are coming in late right now. I see. Uh, if you guys just want to ask a question or speak, yeah, just go for it. I'm pretty much done. Like Zav, I see you there, buddy. Yeah, I, I have not used TurboTax at all. I usually, <laughs> I usually go to my uh, advisor. She's the best. I've been going her to since like I was little. Actually, my parents were doing their taxes, and you know, she's awesome. She was like quick. She's like on a she was like a freaking robot, bro. Like she was like clicking and everything, got everything down, told her what I needed to say, saying this is what I got, this is what I'm gonna claim for my tax. Um, and she put that all down, and I got my money back like that. Like less than a week later, I got my money. Yeah, it depends. Like, if you have a great tax advisor, go see them every single year. And she's also cheap, too. Like, she, she doesn't even charge that much. I know TurboTax, I don't know how much it costs for TurboTax because I haven't used it. I only seen people use it, like, from the outside. Like, I don't know. Yeah, Dill, yeah, you guys are coming in late now. Like, ah, Lee. <laughs> Yeah, I've been talking for like 30 plus minutes. <laughs> but yeah, we're uh I covered basically the basics of like stocks and uh you know, earnings reports, dividends. Think about doing this maybe, I don't know, depends on like, you know, what you guys feel like like later, I don't know. <laughs> Like if something big happens again, like I, I don't want to tell you guys what to buy because not not financial advice. I'm not trying to be like a hustler here, bro. Like, nah, nah, nah. I'm trying to give advice. I'm not telling you when to sell, when to buy, what to buy, what to sell. Because I'm not trying to be like Zach Morris on Twitter. <laughs> that guy <Yeah>. is me. <laughs> they say in the financial industry that you need to do your due diligence. Yep. And that can be from reading the news to looking at the company's financial reports to analyzing the company's financial ratios compared to the industry's financial ratios. And just how long are you willing to keep the stock for? All of that comes to you. Yep. The individual investor. Yep. Comes down to you guys. Like, uh, I, like I said, I have my ups and downs. And, uh, my worst year in trading was 2022. Like, I had to take out a loan behind my parents' back. I got in trouble. I got caught in the summer of 2022. And uh, I told them straight up, I said, yeah, I, I, I took out a loan. And I put it in, this is off topic because we're talking about stocks. I put it in Voyager Crypto Exchange. And you all know what happened with Voyager. It went downhill. And um, I had over 16 grand in that my account. I only got six thousand dollars back uh in the following year of twenty twenty three in May and uh the loan I took out was uh from SoFi. It was a forty thousand dollar loan. Um I'm still well I'm pay I could pay it off now, but uh thanks to this past week, holy crap. Like holy this week was a blessing. But uh yeah, like I'm just saying, like and uh you just gotta be careful what you trade, you know, like like certain things yeah. and options, especially yeah, <laughs> and options trading, especially like I had my highs and lows, and my lows were low, low. Like looking at your portfolio going from two thousand to thirty-two thousand, back down to sixteen, then back down to a hundred bucks. Like nah, 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 nah. It's yeah, mainly due to IV crush, which is another important part about options. Because IV crush is not fun. Post earnings, usually an IV runs up, which is the implied volatility. So the price of the call option or put will go up like crazy before the earnings report of a uh, like a company. And your best bet is to sell right before the earnings. Just 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 my two cents. Always try to sell before earnings to get the juice of the call option or the put option. Because if the stock does not go where you want it to for your puts or calls, which is up and down, you're fucked. <laughs> you're pretty much fucked, bro. Like, <laughs> it's not fun. 
it is not fun for uh, Ivy Crush. Like, yeah. Yeah, comment about the Greeks. Oh, yeah, the Greeks. That's that's why. It's, yep. That's why I'm leaning into right now with the Ivy Crush. I just said, uh, Greeks and calls and puts. So. <sighs> Oh god. All right. This is going to be my, my last my last lesson tonight. The Greeks. All right. So, what do I have here? I'll let me show you guys Greeks here for my call option. So, the Greeks of a call option or put, you have the delta, the gamma, theta, vega and rho. So, you're when you look at Greeks in a, like a, you know, option trading, always focus on the delta and the theta mainly because they're the they're most important in terms of like studying for your price value of your option buying and uh there's the iv right here so right now it's a little low i know but um it's gonna get higher this week i think for uh this for amd but uh once their earnings report comes out in like two months this is gonna jump but uh yeah so <clears throat> Theta is basically theta decay. So as time goes on, this will get lower and lower and lower, and then the value of it will go lower and lower and lower. Uh, theta decay is basically you buy a further call, a further out call option or put, it stays higher, and the value of your call option will be higher as well. But as time goes on, it will decay, as in theta decaying, and your value will go down for your you know options. Yep, and. Uh, <laughs> oh shit <laughs> but uh yeah that's the basics of that and for delta it, yeah it has to stay above this part here to uh be any beneficial i know there's a certain like levels to it um i'm still like getting into like the greeks and stuff still i i've been mainly paying attention to delta and theta mainly uh in my options buying that's it and iv of course but uh <clears throat> Like Vega and Rho, I don't pay attention to at all. But uh, I'm trying to research that more as uh, this year goes on. But like I said, I've been the only option buying for since March of 21. And uh, I'm really like, you know, what should we call it? Grasping how to do options this, you know, this past year. Like really good at it. I mean, like getting good at it. Not like a noob trader or a... Uh, a degenerate trader, but I'll do some degen trades here and there, but uh, that's not my main, uh, my main shtick. But uh, yeah. So if anyone else has anything to you know add on? Come you know be my guest. If not, uh, we're gonna end this in about like yeah, a couple minutes. <laughs> review okay but <laughs> yeah uh i basically covered like when to buy and sell a stock shares that's i went i covered options trading i covered uh rolling options in the tr uh, in options world i also covered earnings reports and IV crush leading up to earnings reports of a company. Um, I also covered, um, you know, uh, dividends for stock splits of a company and holding shares, accumulating shares from those dividends, from those stock splits for long-term investors would benefit you as an individual retail investor in the uh, long-term. Um, I also covered uh, some Greeks early just now. And uh, yeah, it's a lot of stuff. It's it's a lot of stuff. Like I would just recommend you like I have links and stuff to give you guys on YouTube. Like these guys right here, I've been you know watching for the past five months. Uh, tips and tricks for simple trades and beginners trading and whatnot. These guys are very in depth, intuitive. It'll help you out. I have you know you know these articles on Nerd Wallet, how to trade options, as well. Um, 
how to trade stocks, basics, what trader you want to be, aggressive, passive, um, you know, studying earnings of a company, uh, you know, buying companies you like, buying good companies, or, you know, buying penny stocks and hope you would make crap ton of money from a simple move up like in cents. <laughs> uh but yeah i posted this in wall street boys so this link this playlist is all for you guys to look at um yeah yeah penny stocks are very risky so i only played them if there's a huge movement behind it like this past week with faraday trading i i wish i got into it i just looked at it that was it <laughs> where is it FEI, this one right here. Yeah, this was a crazy week for this. This was something else. Look at this. 5, 387. 8,000%. That's insane. Is the other channel show it also in the watch? Yeah, Delta is in there. That playlist is in there. So it's for you guys. Yeah, no problem. But and then like anything anyone else have anything to add uh before we call this a night but like i said it's you guys do what you want with your money uh be smart don't burn your bankroll um research the stocks <laughs> the companies like long good companies especially at the max seven you know you have for the max seven is what i usually look at AKA max seven stocks. There we go, right here. I don't want to say it out because you guys don't forget it. So you got Google, Amazon, Apple, Meta, Facebook, uh, Microsoft, Nvidia, and Tesla. There are the, the top seven biggest market cap companies right now trading on the NASDAQ, which is the entire market. That's the NASDAQ. Oh, retro, you gonna stream, buddy? <laughs> After I call this a night. <laughs> yeah, Costco is also good. Retro stream, pause champ. So, yep, better call it now. Uh, anyone else have anything to add? If not, you're just saying adios. Retro should do a live stream during the morning for buying stocks. Yeah, that should, that should be something. <laughs> All right. Well. All right, guys. It's been a night. It's been a pleasure helping you guys out. Uh, like I said, good luck if you guys are investing. Um, you know, like I said, be careful what you do with your money. Uh, don't do stupid shit like what I did with uh, taking out loans and stuff and <laughs> and degen trading. Yeah, that's it's not fun when you lose. Trust me. But everyone will have the highs and lows in in the market. Um, you just gotta manage your risks. And um, yeah. Invest in good companies like the Max Seven, um, long term wise. But uh, yeah, like I said, be careful what you do with your money. So uh, anyway, like I said, good luck to all, and hope you all have a good night. Peace.